morning, everybody, and evening morning. with a difference. Today is a very important day for all of us in India and more so for the Indian Army. Today is the Indian Army Day, the 75th anniversary of the Indian Army. And what better than having somebody with us who has been one of the most prolific authors, a very senior veteran, and he was the deputy DG for the Artillery Corps, knows artillery in and out. And in addition to all those coveted appointments he had, he also was defense attache with the, at Vietnam with the Indian Embassy. And welcome, sir. We have with us today Mayor General P.K. Chakravarti, who has been a part of our, uh, you know, ADU interviews all throughout and makes the most interesting ones. So most welcome to our chat rooms. Thank you, Samgita. Grateful. And so today is Indian Army Day. So we wish you a very happy Army Day, sir. And uh, I think it's just wonderful that you're here. And one of the most important things for any person, for a, for a military man, for the families, for the civilians, everyone, you know, talks of the guns, the RT guns, every Bofors is a household name. So are some of the other ones. And today we'd be so happy for you to tell us what is available with the Indian Army and what is its wish list, sir? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Sangeetha. Firstly, wish you also a very happy Army Day. And with that, I'll just proceed. What do we have in the Indian Art? I think the Indian artillery is very well equipped today. Uh, well, broadly, we can classify ourselves into, shall we put it, the guns the, uh, and the houses. I'll club them together. We have the mortars and we have the rockets and the missiles. All right. And when we look at the guns, I'll just say the most important gun with us is the 155 mm Bofors, which you just are very well known to you. And we are also having the 155 millimeter ultra high uh, light howitzer, which has come from the United States. A number of regiments have come. And then we have got also the Dhanush, which is now seeing its way into us. So basically, we've got three types of 155, which is the basic field gun and of course 105 is gradually being replaced 122s will be going out these are the guns as far as the guns are concerned we have the 120 mm mortar still continuing you may have a longer range mortar coming in after some some time and then we have got the rockets we have got right now three types of rockets you've got the bm21 extended range which is going up to 40 kilometers then you've got the pinaka which is our indigenous rocket. And this is up to 30, almost again, shall we say 40 kilometers with 60 kilometers already tried. The beauty of Pinaka, it's an indigenous equipment. And today it's being possibly being exported to Armenia. Now, that's a great thing. I mean, say for getting an order from Armenia for a purely indigenous design by the DRDO, made by Tatas and LNT, an outstanding thing to which in which I was very, very, I was intimately involved with all these projects, so I shouldn't be talking much about myself. Let's talk more about the equipment. Now, when then we have got the Smirch rocket system, which we have from Russia. Great rocket system. Again, can go up almost about 90 kilometers. Pinaka, we intend getting the... It's, a, it's not very difficult to increase the range. Now, 60, you, we, I think we should be getting about close to 100 kilometers very shortly. And then finally, we got the Brahmos missile. And Brahmos today is ranging about 400, but I think I don't see uh, the very far away that we should be ranging about 600 kilometers and going on to the hypersonic variety of the Brahmos. Uh, to put it all, basically, I think if we have the right cyber assistance and the, we could have excellent targeting and, and we could take on anybody. You're well aware today, the aim is that how you get targets is you must have seen the number of raids which have taken place, cyber attacks on the aims and all. Because today, Sangeeta, if someone has only your mobile number, I'm repeating, mobile number, they don't, all they have to do is a triangulation. They know where you are and you can be thereafter targeted by a missile. This is the technology, which is not very, I mean, it's a difficult technology. So if you have the mobile numbers, then, then you'll find most of the, that's why I'm saying cyber has become very important at all levels. 
because if you know the mobile numbers of critical people you can target them today that is the level at which artillery is so this is what we have and we are back now of course the uavs have gone to the aviation but still they would be helping us the uavs the ucavs they'll be helping us loitering missiles they would be helping us in a big way so much about the current but still the responsibility for intelligence gathering surveillance you know tasking still remains with the artillery and in this i would also mention that we have the weapon locating radar which is indigenously manufactured which is a great achievement we have a few american radars still with us and which were the shall i put it the trend which allowed us to reach there now you ask me what is our wish list wish list so, is sir, before list. that so before yes. that you know when we were talking one point came to my mind that uh, we have a huge inventory now is it uh, at the moment available on all the sides of the country or is it concentrated towards the northern and the eastern sectors uh, how how is generally the uh, you know uh, distribution well uh, sagita i i know the exact distribution i was involved in it very deeply unfortunately you see when you prepare a meal for anybody also you now uh, some there some people who say we survive only on ice cream you cannot i mean to say it's it's impossible to cater now supposing someone comes and says i'll only eat gulab jamuns i think it would be impossible even in a marriage ceremony to cater for everybody same way well uh, our numbers are finite our numbers are finite so therefore we have to carry out what is known as and what i did right now a net assessment which is the area which requires more which is the area which requires less and a constant adjustment has to be carried out you see that's why uh, we went in for guns which could be airlifted we went in for guns which could be lifted by helicopters and finally you must have heard that we are making a road now which will be going parallel to which will be you know cutting across the himalayas on the line of cont- actual control which will start from say shall we put it one end of the arunachal and go on up to vijayanagar which is at the tri junction of myanmar india and china all that i'm trying to get at is that at no time nobody can have weapons of such that everybody would be having at the same time so it is extremely important to know where is the threat how is the threat going to develop and this is the most important task which we have to spend our time on knowing what would our northern adversary do what would our western adversary do how much do we have and where do we have this constant adjustment is what will see us actually you know come to this numbers so really speaking whatever we have now today is still ladakh is right we have taken even k9 vajra to eastern ladakh and similarly you take we have taken armor tanks there till we get the light tank all the other tanks have to be there because the chinese have deployed all the other tanks so our gun systems have now moved to eastern ladakh obviously wherever the shall we put it your requirement is heavy you will always have to move your guns it is not that i can give you that can i proceed with the wish list or you would like to ask another thing yes sir absolutely now i would really like to ask you that uh, we've always been wanting more huh? that has always been there so what is the wish list at the moment sir well i'll put it see firstly <laughs> all armed forces belong to the government the government i mean to say has to i still remember a uh, finance minister addressing us at idsa he says on one end of the spectrum i've got nuclear reactors on the other end of the spectrum i've got toilets and i've got to distribute between all of them evenly the same thing applies to artillery same thing applies to anybody else what is our wish list i'll just quickly give out the important issues and then we can you know discuss them with first is i think women are joining the artillery now i would place that above everything else why you see today uh, women have proved to be very good in combat the ukraine war is on right now and we are having people from 
number of places serving in Ukraine, but the ladies are performing very, very well. And they are from many countries. You know, the Ukraine war, it's been a totally outsourced war. Some say the war has been outsourced by a big part to Ukraine, and Ukraine has outsourced it to everybody. So I'm doing a task on outsourcing. So ladies are doing an excellent task, particularly in the artillery, if they come, I see them doing a very good task in targeting. See, the whole thing is to get a target. Today you got the weapons, you got the ammunition, and you rightly ask, have you got enough? You, we don't have enough to be everywhere, such a huge country. Who can afford to be deployed everywhere evenly? It has to be a concentration at some place, an economy at another place. So the ladies will help us to get accurate targeting. They'll be helping us in many ways, you know, in, in sitting at a point and working endlessly for hours. That is their forte, I think. We've seen even in Ukraine and all, because in areas such as these, so we are, we, we are wishing that they come in and we optimize. Uh, it was often said that if they enter, we'll, our promotions would be affected. I think the myth was burst when the present chief of army staff belongs to sappers and ladies are already in sappers. That means something is wrong. That means wherever they go, they make sure that promotions also open up. Otherwise, the sappers never had a chief. But moment the ladies entered, and I dare say that what you call sappers and signals, both have the ladies in their combat arm, in their arms. And so the artillery, if they get in, I think they'll do a very good job. You already have a lady officer in the Siachen Glacier right now. Yes. So She's definitely, definitely. No, no. See, I, I've seen ladies and let me be very candid in saying the best ladies opt for the armed forces. It's sad that we can only take in a limited number. They qualify at the SSB, but believe me or not, they are so good that we can't take everybody in. And I would put it, I've seen their performance in the most difficult theatres, in the most difficult, I think, hats off to them. They're very well, they've got a lot of interesting. And we have to know what they, how to get, extract the best. That's what leadership is all about. So that's the first point. Then we come on to the other areas. See, our focus has to be mainly on ammunition. See, on today, the whole battle we are seeing, unless you can range, you know, more than 80 to 100 kilometers, because you have the systems which allow you to get observation at that distance. So we have to go in for ammunition, which are at very, very long ranges. So this is the second point. I'll just leave it. The third is everybody is now talking about a rocket force. See, we ourselves have got, what should I put it, we have the uh, uh, BM-21, we have got the, we, we, the Tinaka, we have got Smart, and then finally we got Brahmos. Now, you see, the point is, whether a nuclear war will be fought or not, we don't know. But say the PLA has a rocket force. Everybody has a rocket force. Even today, the HIMARS are proving to be excellent in Ukraine. Russia is using only missiles. So we may need to have a rocket force. Now, that is an important point to be seen. How the artillery addresses it, how quickly it can address it. Can it do something about it? That's the third point I want to say. And the fourth point, which I would like to say, is the word term is being used, integrated deterrence. Now, the United States, you know, the strategic doctrine of President Joe Biden has just been released. It speaks of integrated deterrence. Now, when you talk of integrated distance, firepower of the artillery plays a very important part. Point is, do we have the ammunition for it? You see, often it's said, why put in so much of ammunition and of has have huge ammunition dumps all over the country? And uh, obviously, there are problems in guarding them, securing them, inspecting them. But without, I mean, I think the weapon of the, uh, what Ukraine has proved is ammunition is going to be the main weapon. And therefore, if ammunition is going to be the main weapon, undoubtedly, you would like to see that ammunition is there, not only in quality, but in big numbers. That's what I would like to say. I think, uh, you know, where the wish list finishes, we have one point which is very strong, which is that uh, does it finish with imports? 
and uh, you know at the moment there's so much of atmanirbhar bharat and make in india as the clarion call so uh, are we self sufficient enough to uh, you know fill all gaps possible uh, let's say within the next few years or imports will keep continuing see ma'am uh, no country in the world can do without imports now i'll just take let's start start with the united states of america you have the boeing aircraft 80 to 85% of the components are made in china you have the ipad which apple is the i think the richest or the biggest company on the stock market right now 80% of the components are made in china even the korean companies i find that most of them when i go into you know when you start going into details so to say that you will stop imports is i think you know it's it's a dependent world ma'am we have signed all these issues of the wto where we say that we should allow each other to take part you cannot stop imports or exports okay you want export you have to have imports you look at our import bill today i can give it out to you and therefore it, it would prove the point atmanirbhar is a thing which enables us to what you call possibly focus on our indigenous industry but certainly i always am an ad- person who advocates that we have to look at you know we after all in the army you're not dealing with only purely atmanir but you are dealing with an adversary and when you are dealing with an adversary today you need not be fighting a war with him you are at all times you are posturing posturing means you have got to show that you are equipping yourself you have got the best equipment so therefore it has to be a combination of what you call the best technology and possibly combining with with what we have certainly we know where we stand i don't have to tell anybody that where we stand yes we are outstanding uh, we are good we are everything is there with us but the fact remains that you see the research and development how much are we spending on it and what can it lead us to and what is the technology we have and how much can we absorb when we take all this in mind definitely we can't say that we will not have anything coming from russia we will not have anything coming from the united states you have today one of the assistant secretaries of the united states in india right now and he said very clearly that we are in for giving you the predators you know why are we talking of all this i'm just talking one equipment today when we had the uh, operations in eastern ladakh first we got the naval what you call the aircraft which used for locating submarines to be positioned in ladakh so that they could give us intelligence and then we went in for the mq9 which is their uav so that they could again the guardian uav which would give us the long range data so therefore see this in atmanirbhar maskata the bulk must be your own but you know have to have some which would be coming from abroad i don't see a reason where we are going to break through and we say that okay because i i haven't seen the united states do it i'm not seeing china do it they are all getting what is known as an assortment of technologies from here there why does china send so many of its good scholars to the united states for learning in higher institutions of learning every chinese person i meet whether he is from the government or whether he's from the thing says without the united states help in technology we cannot survive and i would put it as the other way around to the two way trade is 600 billion dollars between these two countries our own trade today the united states is the biggest trading partner what are what are we trading i mean say do you mean to say that everything is going from this side to that side? it's a two way trade so therefore technology must come in people have to get technology i don't know how much technology the us is prepared to give but we have to possibly now get something from them we are getting from russia a lot and we are getting from other countries and we are trying also on our own to develop but on our own well even a a human being when he is born i do remember a speech of barack obama where he says you need somebody to lift you and that's what you all did for me and he gave a excellent example when a child is born the mother lifts up the child 
and teaches the child how to walk. Same way, we have to be lifted by some country. We can't be totally, you know, independent and say from today onwards we are taking nothing. It, it just can't be done. I mean to say, it, I can open any component, even the laptops or anything. Everything has got something from abroad. Yes, you can have a factory open. You can have a Vande Bharat paint. Yes, it is indigenous technology. But definitely when you go into the details, where is the engine being made from, where is the uh, electricity system, you will see other companies coming in. So that is my answer to this question. It's a very complex situation. But we need to go in for more and more indigenization. Right, sir. And when you talk of China, sir, one uh, thing which uh, I wanted to understand, I'm sure audience also would want to know, uh, how behind are we from the Chinese artillery systems and Pakistan, because it's getting support from China, so it actually has uh, what China has. So, uh, I mean, uh, where, how much do we need to move to come at par with them? Well, as far as the Chinese artillery is concerned, I think we have got similar, they have got the Norinco 155, we have got the 155. See, the question of the ammunition, as far as our ammunition is concerned, the way we are going, we are well off. I think our artillery is adequate to meet the Chinese artillery requirements. Well, in terms of targeting, targeting the more UAVs are with China. See, you can have the weapons, but unless you know where to shoot, how do you do it? Then they have got missiles. They have got their, you know, rocket force. And they have got all missiles, which are from the DF-17 to others. They have both for the nuclear as well as the conventional. We don't have it. Ramos is the only one which is what you call pure conventional. Otherwise, now Prala is coming in, I believe, which is going to be conventional. That's what we read in the newspapers. Prala is coming in. Prahar was also again supposed to be a dual use. So we are thinking on those lines. So now the main weapon which is actually being used are missiles. The Ukraine war, you just see Russia is all because you need longer ranges. You need to hit at important centers of gravity, which are, say, power stations, energy is being impacted. People should not have electricity. So missiles come in in a big way. How many missiles do we have, which we have the capability of that? So that is the issue to be seen. Right, sir. And sir, uh, you were also posted in Vietnam, sir, as a defense attaché. And uh, on a general uh, platform, sir, uh, is Vietnam as uh, uh, adept uh, in artillery as China is? See, Vietnamese are very good soldiers. Possibly, see, I have seen all the armies. Hmm. All armies are great. There's so much to learn from them, whether it's the US Army, the Israeli Army, the Vietnamese Army. Point is, uh, an army is good if it can take casualties. Like the Indian Army has become a very robust army you know, because it can take casualties. It does not bother, the, nobody is bothered about a casualty in the Indian Army. From the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. Then it becomes an outstanding army. Vietnam is a similar army. But as far as artillery is concerned, I think the Indian artillery is more modern any day. A very modern artillery, ma'am, because something which I was involved with. Even if you, I remember, see, I shouldn't be, I can't give you out everything. Even if you compare with the United States, the equipment we have is really state of the art. And we have gone in at the right time, despite all the policies, we have been able to get the waivers and we have been able to uh, do it because we were in touch what the world is at. We were never a step behind, possibly the best artillery in the world. Not in numbers, in quality, I don't think anywhere we are lacking. Right, sir. And, absolutely. And great right. quality, are you name a thing, we are, we are there. We are, if the Hamas is firing, we, I remember telling them that we don't need Hamas, we've got Smudge, we've got Pinaka. Absolutely. Not that we, we were also offered all these equipment. So we are, so we are in touch and we have the best. The point is, ma'am, where the China will score or anybody will score is, the ability to get a target. So if your cyber is good, if your ability to have more UAVs thrown, 
more what you call sensors, better satellites. Mm-hmm. Today, Indian Army, as of now, has possibly going to get half a satellite from the Indian Air Force. China has got a revisit time of about, I think, 5 to 10 minutes on this eastern Ladakh. I was calculating the other day, today the minimum requirement is 40 satellites. So unless, unless you know what is the target, ma'am, how do you today use the weapon? Where do I fire? So they are definitely better off from that angle. That's from the weapon point of view, from the radar's point of view, we are okay. But satellites, we need to privatize. We need to, you know, get more people in it. That's it. That's it, sir. And sir, uh, we, the biggest resource for any army is the human resource. And uh, the same stands true for the Indian artillery. So what is what are the systems of, uh, you know, upgradation and trainings which happen with all these new technologies that come in? How do we train, especially the Javan, sir? Is what are the systems of training him, you know, uh, when we adopt new technologies and uh, new weapon systems, sir? Well, our uh, Jawan, let me put it, to, is an Indian. So am I an Indian. And uh, if you see the qualifications, intake qualifications for a Jawan and an officer, it's, there's hardly any difference. I'm talking the basic entry, which is the National Defense Academy. Or even if we take the TES, which is again a very popular entry, it's uh, basically 10 plus 2, which is the 12th class, which is being considered the equivalent. And you are going through a UPSC. He is also now today the latest recruiting, which I have suggested. Um, gone will be the days when a man will be running. It will be the first will be a written test. Completely outsourced. So as far as the Jawan is concerned, you can visit any place where military cantonments are. Each one of them is operating two mobile phones. A smartphone today is a possibly a very high-end technology. So he is faster than you in adapting. I keep going to units and I, as I told you, I just returned from my own unit, which I command. They are very well up in technology. They are very well up in the app which is being used. What is that? Uh, running status of my train, which tells you where the Indian Railways train is at this moment, was told by my junior commissioned officer. Then I downloaded it. Because he was giving me a running commentary in this fog where the train is. Minute by minute, it is giving you, if you open the app. That is the capability of the Jawan today. And we are taking in Agni Weeds, as you know. They'll be going out of after four years. And they are already, ICICI Bank has said that they are prepared to take the Agni Weeds in. I'm sure they will land up in all places. There is nothing needed to update. See, the modern technology is very, very simple. Not at all complex. We, you, you just look at it. During COVID, we started this, what you call these online Zoom and Cisco WebEx. Everybody is using it. Did we have to do a diploma for it? No. Same way the Jawan, he, and he likes to update himself on technology. Every Jawan wants to op- operate a computer. Most of them have laptops. Since you belong to the engineers, I went to the engineer regiment. I always visit the engineer regiment of a cantonment. Whether in the United States, I visited Fort Belvoir. Whenever I go to a cantonment, I visit the engineer regiment. And I always make it a point to drive my vehicle through where the men are living. You want to hear what cars our men are owning and they were parked over there. There was a Kia. There was Aura. There was Honda City. Brand new one, not second hand or third hand. These were parked in the NCO's quarters. So what technology are you going to go and teach them? The BMW was certainly not there. But definitely I saw the Kia. I saw the Aura. I saw Nexon which is Tata's vehicle. So they are operating all these vehicles. They are driving to office with these vehicles for PT, ma'am. This is the modern Jawan today. Then I asked them, I didn't I disclose much of my identity. My JCO was there. How did they get it? They have not bought it through like we do. Straight away go to one of the showrooms. They have bought it through the CSD app. The new CSD procedure is purely online. They have used that. 
So I said it's troublesome. He said there's no problem. We know that. So whole day we we keep spending on it, and sometimes the site opens. So men are very updated. They're very keen. You give them a technological light. Remember on the buffers, there's always a competition who would like to fire it. You must have seen the same in the sappers units. Anything which is technological, any Indian given a piece of technology, he gets excited about. It. That's why he is leading the world in technology. Right, sir. And I think that's a wonderful note to close on, sir. And it was great speaking with you, and great to understand that uh, the core, which is one of the lights of the battlefield, and of course, uh, you know, in peacetime, we really love seeing them. You know, it attracts. the major attraction of the crowd when it comes to uh, exhibitions where you have defense equipment are uh, your artillery guns so it's wonderful sir and i think uh, we we in the 75th year of uh, indian army is raising i think it's a great uh, positive feel to be on that we have just the right equipment we have a wish list yes but it should really get fulfilled and we have uh, the human resource which is absolutely state of the art thank you very much for being uh, on our chat room sir hope to see you again and hope to you know discuss what happens this year again with you when we meet on artillery day sir thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am